Hello everyone, I'm James Tompkin. I investigate how computer graphics, computer vision, and interaction techniques can help us edit and explore representations of our visual world. I'm going to show you a little bit of what I've been working on along with my colleagues. Our world is dynamic, and we can capture this with video, but video can be difficult to work with as it's hard to edit the content. What if we wanted to remove objects from videos, like my enthusiastic colleague here? Modeling the perspective changes in the background allows us to remove him. What if we wanted to remove dynamic motions behind objects, like the motions of musicians behind these passers-by? We don't know exactly what the musicians were doing, but we can create something plausible by combining pieces of any shape or size from elsewhere in the video to fill the hole. Could we selectively stop time in a scene for a special effect? Automatically finding regions of loopable motion lets us creatively recombine the moving parts into cinemagraphs. Often, editing the appearance of objects in videos is hard because of the lighting in the scene. However, if we decompose the scene into just the lighting and just the color of objects, we can easily change the brickwork and roof tiling of this house while maintaining the light which breaks through the surrounding tree leaves. Applying filters to videos often leaves us with a flickery result because what looks like a minor frame-to-frame -frame visual change is actually a large change to the image operation. We can create temporarily consistent results for most image operations, like high dynamic range toning or stylistic transformations, even without knowing anything about how the image operation works. Finding connections between media can also help us edit and explore. Take this database of videos of a city. Finding the visual connections between scenes can help us make sense of the space. We can automatically build a graph of the relations within the database, then explore this graph interactively. How about taking a tour of the sites of London? Specifying start and end views allows us to synthesize a smooth camera path between them. What about looking around corners in a photograph? Crowdsourcing nearby photos and finding their spatial relationship lets us define portals into other images and interactively change perspectives. To provide spatial context for multiple videos, we can embed smartphone videos into panoramic imagery to compare events over time. Now, instead of panning and zooming, we see the video inlay move over the panorama. This flexible system can be used on desktops, head-mounted displays, or on spherical displays. We can even take a tablet out into the real world and use it like a time machine window to compare to events which occurred in the past. These techniques find connections within and between media to help us ease the creative process and to help us organize information. Finding and exploring visual connections is fundamental to understanding media and so is fundamental to helping us understand our visual world. Beyond media, I've also used real-time video capture to solve interface problems. For instance, how can we create simple interactions for hard control problems such as using gestures to control characters in virtual reality or even to control robots? Or, how it is possible to sculpt with light directly in 3D at the precision of the human hand by exploiting bidirectional microlenses and an infrared pen for future glasses-free multi-view displays. I've also looked at how computation can help solve design problems, for instance, to drastically increase the resolution of static multi-view displays by tailoring microlenses to content. Or, how computation can increase flexibility in musical instrument design, like this glockenspiel made from animal shapes. Or even a key which plays a chord from a single strike. Thank you for watching and goodbye.